Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and no, this video is not about having fresher breath. Instead, we're going to talk about some DIY fly boxes. Stay tuned. So I can blame my fascination with fly boxes on my buddy John Dunn. He's been a friend for over 25 years and he is a DIY guy to the most extreme. Ever since day one of meeting him, it was obvious he was looking to make or find the perfect fly box. And ever since that day, I think I was too. Well, John, I hate to burst your bubble and I think you already know this, but there's no perfect fly box out there, but I know we'll keep searching. It seems like just whenever we have that perfect box that's gonna meet all of our needs, enter another style of fly fishing and it just throws things awry. Well, during this video, I'm gonna take us down two paths. Path number one is kind of the obvious one. It's when we take something like an Altoid tin and then repurpose it into a fly box. Whereas path number two is where we take a fly box already in existence and improve upon it. Now I'm going to show you close-ups of these in a bit, but just to kind of talk you through why you would even want to do this. Uh, hopefully the obvious is you have all these containers lying around and you think maybe I can use those for fly fishing. And the answer is you probably can. And, and for starters, if you are already doing this, please just stop listening right now, pause the video and add a comment down below in the comment section because I would love to hear about some of your ideas and some of the boxes that you have repurposed. If we're connected on Facebook, please make a post to your page of a picture of one of your boxes and then tag me so I'm aware of it because I know there are probably some just extremely creative ideas out there. Well, to talk about the Altoid idea, and I know there have probably been a million fly fishermen and fishermen out there over the years that have used Altoid tins. What's great about this box is it's really small and it fits just about anywhere. My initial reason for having a box like this is I have some foam inside, some magnets, I can throw some dry flies in it, some nymphs, a couple streamers, it fits in my, po my pocket and it's perfect to go, let's we'll say brook trout fishing. All I need is my rod, maybe my nipper, some tippet, and this box, and we're off. Now, I also love to keep Altoid tins like this at my fly tying desk and then maybe I have magnets and as I tie flies, I just simply throw them into the tin, the magnets are attaching them and then I instantly grab them, throw them into my fly box and it's kind of like my go box for the day. Maybe I'll move some flies into this tin where this is the tin that I'm going to be operating out of for the morning until I see other stuff going on once I get on the water. So these tins are really just great to have and there's all kinds of different things that you can do with them. Uh, the typical components that I use inside them are like replacement foam inserts from fly boxes and you can just do a quick internet search and you can just search for replacement fly box foam. You can also just buy regular foam and I'll show you some regular foam here in a, in a second. And I also love to buy magnets and glue them in and the glues, the options are really up to you. You could use Gorilla Glue, you could use some type of an epoxy, I've even used super glue in a pinch. But just play around with it, make sure your magnets are facing the right way and everything, make sure the fly is attached to them. and these are really easy ones to make and you'll love them. They're just really lightweight. And then the other kind of avenue that I was talking about was taking a fly box already in existence and improving upon it. Now this is just a quick example that I have and this is one that I've had for, gosh, I don't know, 15 years. This is a Plano fishing box and I use this one for steelhead flies. So I have these six containers and I was using this one and I realized I had flies in those containers but I was wasting space on the lid. So I immediately just grabbed a piece of foam. We're just talking some really thin foam. I grabbed the hot glue gun and I hot glued six pieces of foam on the cover. So I have room for, we'll say maybe egg flies, some soft tackles, and then bead heads up here. And I can carry a heck of a lot of flies in this little box, which kind of gets back to the reason that I love to experiment a little bit, especially with ready-made boxes. And it's because I don't want to carry a million boxes in my vest. It just takes up so much space and each one of these boxes adds weight. Now, do flies add weight? Absolutely. But I'd much rather have like four boxes that will carry all of my flies versus eight that will carry the same amount. So I'm always looking for ways to improve upon my fly boxes and I hope you are too. So now let's change the camera angle just a little bit and I'll show you close-ups of each one of those boxes. So these are my two DIY fly box options. Path number one, that box that really is just not intended to be used for fly fishing, but we're gonna make it into one. And path number two, one that's kind of deemed for fly fishing, but we're gonna make it better. 
So in path number one, we're gonna talk about the Altoids tin. And if you look at this top one compared to this tin, it's obvious this one is much newer. In fact, the more I thought about it, I believe I probably got this one from John. I hope I didn't take it from you, buddy. I believe he gave it to me because he knew, hey, I love these fly boxes too. Now, I am still buying Altoids tins all of the time. You may argue it's because Heather prefers my breath to be fresh. However, I also love to have just a box sitting next to my bench so after I tie a handful of flies, I can throw them into the box and then move them into an appropriate box within my fly fishing bag. Now, you can also, aside from just using them as an empty container or a container with nothing DIY done to it, you can modify it and that's where the fun really starts. Let's take a peek inside of this one, and I apologize if it's dirty at all, but this is a working fly box for sure. Now let's just take a look at how this one's been modified. On the cap, we have three magnets that have been epoxied in place. These have been in there for over a decade. They're not going anywhere. I'm pushing really aggressively on it. They're stuck in place. You can buy these magnets at a craft store. You can buy them online. Sometimes you can buy the magnets and they have an adhesive backing to them where you just peel it off and stick them on. Now be careful with that because if you do it that way, it will definitely work for a period of time. I'm not sure about the longevity, so just kind of keep that in mind. What's nice about these magnets, I can throw bead heads up here, I can throw just small flies, and I can just grab and go, tie them directly onto my tippet. So it's really nice. If you look inside the box, we have some ripple foam. Now what's nice about this foam is that it's not just that flat foam, kind of like you see over in this box. So it really gives me some areas for me to place my hook and to really have them kind of in a more organized fashion. Now there are all kinds of ripple foam ideas out there. You can search for those online. You can look on eBay. Um, I guarantee if you talk to a fly shop as well, they may be able to order you in some if they don't already carry the, the foam in there. Typically when you buy that foam, it comes in a large sheet and then you can just cut it down to size. So the, this is really just a nice little option. It's great to have this Altoids tin that I basically got for free and I just modified it accordingly. I use this one quite frequently. I love to have it as a working fly box. Basically, I'll have it loaded in this one. Really, I'll have it loaded maybe we'll say for the sulfur hatch where I'll have some emergers, I'll have some duns, I'll have some spinners, then I'll have some sulfur nymphs ready to go here. So whenever that sulfur hatch is on, I have this box, it will say sulfurs across the top in Sharpie, and I'm ready to grab it and go out the door. Now, the next path that we're gonna talk about is when we have a box that's kind of made for fishing. Now, you could probably argue and say, is this box really a fishing box? Well, it is, it says Plano on it, P-L-A-N-O. So I'm 99% sure they mainly sell to fishermen, just fly fishermen, eh, you can argue with me there. But this is a box that I love to use for steelheading. So I like to put some various steelhead flies in here. And as I was using it, I realized, geez, I could just get more space out of this cap. Now, the first time I put it on, I'm not sure if you can see any of the leftover, I tried to super glue these pieces in. And, and they worked well for about a season, then they began falling out. I didn't like that. So I hot glued them in, and they've been in here for over five years with just a hot glue gun. Could I epoxy them? Sure. You may even be able to use some UV glues now because once you use that UV glue, it will, I think with the flashlight, it will hit and kind of cure it through this cover. So I may be trying some solaries through this method in the future. But don't just look at my box and say, geez, I need to get one of those Play-Doh boxes to then enhance the cover. But think about the fly boxes that you use right now. When you open them up, is there a section for your flies? And is there a cover where you can put more flies? Because if I look at this box, I'm probably going to be using maybe soft tackles. I could put wet flies in here. I could put dry flies in here. But you can see you can really just get so many more options on this cover as well. So this was just a quick sneak peek at two of the DIY options that I have that I'm currently using. There's about four different boxes that are DIY that I love to use but I want to get your creativity going. So now let's change the camera angle one more time. I'll talk just a little bit more about this, but I really hope that you're thinking, ah, oh, let me look through my boxes. How can I improve upon them? Or are you gonna run out and grab an Altoids tin if you haven't already? Or is there something else that you think, you know what, I'm gonna go with this one and I think this will work for my box. Now that you've seen two of my DIY fly boxes up close, I hope your creative wheels are just spinning and you're ready to go and you wanna start repurposing or kind of revising some of your boxes out there. And good luck with all of that. Now, as a little bit of a disclaimer, 
Are DIY boxes all that I use? No, that's that's not for sure. Uh, I definitely love using all of the name brand boxes that are out there today and some of the classic ones as well. Um, I just have a variety of fly boxes. Kind of like I mentioned at the beginning, John has definitely put his influence on me when it comes to fly boxes and I'm a fly box junkie. There's no two ways about it. But I can promise you that every season I am always just trying to find a way to have less and less fly boxes that will carry more of the flies that I'm using, especially on those days needed on the water. And someday, I'm sure someday, I will share out all the fly boxes and my vest system and all that stuff with you, but it seems like every season or every season and a half, I'm constantly just adjusting it, just like these DIY fly boxes. Well, thank you so much for watching this YouTube fly tying or we'll say a fly fishing video. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com or you can leave a comment down below in the comment section. And again, I really encourage you to do so. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, please check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also am found on Instagram and on Facebook. And if you're on Facebook, uh, please connect with me. Trout and Feather does have a page, like that page. And once you've liked that page, post your pictures of your DIY fly boxes. I can't wait to see these uh, after this video posts. I'm just sure that there are so many great ideas out there I haven't even thought about yet. And I'm gonna steal your ideas. So please do that. Well, once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see all of you next time.